Thank you. Um, I was just saying, I'm, I'm beginning to feel like Bruno Mog, you know, he's up on stage, I think, a few times uh, during this. Uh, um, I know I spoke earlier, but I really wanted to talk a little bit more about um, what is the Hoffman Smoking Center for, for Typography and why we're here. Um, I didn't bring any or wanted to show any pictures of Leah Hoffmitz Milken. That's who the center is named after, because at the end of this, I have a link for everyone who can go look at everything yourself. But the center is only about two and a half years old. I know, it's amazing. People think we've been around forever. Um, it's in Pasadena, California. It's part of Art Center College of Design, but it's not under any department. It is a freestanding center. So I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of autonomy, and a lot of autonomy in terms of programming, in terms of money, and in terms of how we support the community. And in the last two and a half years, um, it's been my, I can say my honor, to kind of visit with different parts of the community, including education, and um, not just type design, but also graphic designers who work with typography, because as Simon Johnston, my creative director, says, you know, typography is the spine that runs through graphic design. Um, but anyway, Leah Hoffmitz was a well-known typographer and professor at the college for over 20 years, and unfortunately, she passed away. And her husband, Mr. Milken, happens to be a billionaire. And I just said, well, I think she deserves her name on a building. Thus, we have the Hoffman Smokin Center for Typography. So it started in her honor, and she was um, a wonderful teacher. And I used to say she was a far better teacher than I was, or am still. Um, but I just wanted to show you what um, what we're starting to do and starting to do is really support education. So I thought I'd show you our mission and our mission really is built in, you know, the mission of the Hoffman Smokin Center for Typography is to set the standard of excellence in typography education. I think that's important. That we want to elevate and advance the teaching and understanding of both letter form design and ty typographic practice. Oh, thank you. Uh, we want to provide valuable support and service, and this is important, support and service to the educational and professional communities that reinforce the value of typography, and to honor the past and anticipate the future of typography in a society of rapidly changing visual communication methods. So how do we do this? And what, what can we bring to the community? I mean, it's, I have to admit, we're evolving still. Um, but what we do have at Art Center in Pasadena is exhibition space. We have a gallery. And I'll show you, we have a 4,000 square foot letterpress with, oh yeah, lots. We have 3,000 cases of foundry, metal, and wood type. My expertise is I am a letterpress printer. Yes, I work with metal. And we have an archive we're starting to build. And the archive deals with letter form, very specific to letter form design. Type designers who are educators, I think, are important. So a lot of our mission, if you notice, is built into education. And you know, we have to kind of stay focused on how do we support this, the typographic community, and the education, especially today when a lot of programs um, have such difficulty, at least in the United States, we don't have a lot of conservatory schools. Art Center is a conservatory school, which means that its typographic programs are fantastic. RISD is a fantastic program. I don't think there's one typographic-based advanced or graduate program in the United States. I'm trying to push for Art Center's graduate program to push for typography-based graduate program. We'll see how much influence I have. Um, but so we're starting to offer resources. One of the first things we did was, <laughs> I thought I could do, was through the research and work of Leah Hoffmitz, who was a, a researcher herself, and she did teach the history of letter form and typography. From cuneiforms, I believe, up until mm, maybe modernism. Then it was taken over by someone else. So we thought, why should we let her research go to waste? She taught this class for over 20 years. 
So what we decided to do was create an online course for our students at Art Center. Well, Art Center has a horrible learning management system. As I found out, I expected it to be like Ken Burns, you know, documentary with voiceover about typography. Well, it didn't work out that way, but it's a well-written document. And so we decided to turn it into a hyperlink PDF book. So I'm not gonna show you everything. There are 10 chapters and it does start with, wouldn't you know, papyrus, vellum, codex, scrolls. This is just some of the spreads. I would not dare show you the whole thing. And it ends on chapter 10, which brings us into um, deconstruction and reconstruction. I think we stopped with Emma Gray because it is a history book. And I know there's so many books out there that are so wonderfully written. The problem is access and availability of knowledge for people to teach this today and books. So we decided that we're offering this for free to educators. So it's not gonna be sold. So basically, I'll tell you at the end of the, how you access this. Let's say you teach a typography class, type one, type two. You don't have the time to go into history. You don't have time to go into understanding the context of why these letter forms were developed when. Well, you can tell your students, read this chapter. We'll have a bibliography that there's a bibliography with this. So the idea is it's a supplemental guide or a supplemental tool for educators to use. And again, there's no charge. And but there, the only charge I have is to get feedback. Is you have to fill out some information, some metrics of how it's being used. So for instance, there are a lot of universities when I visited them, they say they don't have access to this kind of expertise. And that's was one of the reasons we decided, since it wasn't really an interesting online course, I decided to offer it to the entire community saying, well, use it if you wish, if you're an educator. And because it is education-based um, and it's hyperlinked, if you find something's not working or you think something could be added, we can constantly upgrade and change. So these are, that's going to be available. The next resource that we're offering is something called Design Atlas. Um, Design Atlas was, we're the publishers of it, because it was funded by the center. It was given, we have educator grants. And um, one of the educators at Art Center came up with this concept that they wanted to develop an online visual reference, sort of like a visual encyclopedia. And it's multilingual. So when you say, what does black and white mean? What is actually black and white? or what is actually bleed. Again, it's used as a teaching tool, an educational tool for teachers and students to promote further discussion and understanding of basic type and graphic design principles. <coughs> That's the, I'm not gonna go to the hyperlink. I can do that if I want to, but then it might mess up the whole presentation and he'd be really angry. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, so it just gives you an idea of, as a resource, it really helps define for students or goes further into what is black and white. Here are examples, and when you click on it, you can see who designed this, what was the project about. And every designer's piece that has, is used in this has been contacted. So they know that it's being used. Again, it's an online educational service. It's not meant to be bought or subscribed to. This is one of the resources that the center is helping the community. At least we're just starting in terms of the type and design community. So that gives you just an idea of the look and feel of it. So what is black and white in Spanish? You know? So it, and we're going to, if you're gonna ask the question, we are gonna do Aramaic. As much as we can, we're gonna keep it multilingual because the center is very interested now in how typography, how important it is, and I see a lot of people talking about it today, how important it is to understand that typography today is not just about Latin typefaces, it is about other types of non-Latin faces and availability. Okay, every time we do an exhibition, and I spoke about this earlier, we, or we have a uh, residency, and we'll talk about that, we make catalogs because we like to document this. 
This is Femine, it's a prototype. As I got on the plane to come here, they were all delivered <laughs> to my office, but unfortunately it was on the plane. This will be available, you'll be, it's an on, on demand print, but the first 100 are, we're giving away for free. So what I spoke to you about earlier, the show I, I talked about in protest posters, especially the protest for women, this has the entire collection from the exhibition plus essays by some of the artists and some academics. So if you want to, you can look at this later. That's also going to be available when you go to our website, you'll be able to look at you know, the catalog. You'll be able to know where to download the catalog. The other resource at the center, we've done these three times. We have a typographer and residency program. I think in your little swag bag, it said apply now. Lucien Roberts was our, our third one. Our first one was Lorenz Brunner. Then we had Verksplatz, Verksplatz Typographie, the entire graduate program. It is a six-week program. It is research-based. You are not teaching. You're interacting, but you're not teaching. And it depends on, you know, again, you can find out from the application what is it you want to do for six weeks. I'm not going to tell you how much we pay, because then you run out right now and go apply. Um, it's pretty generous, and um, it's based upon what your project is. A group of, of uh, educators and typographers will look at the applications and make a decision. We ha we've learned from this. We first said, oh, we're doing it this time of year. But then we've learned people's schedules just don't work with our schedule, so we have a, we have a little more flexibility. It's a six weeks program, and in that program we always document. This is the catalog, and you're more than welcome to come and look at this catalog here if you're here today. We, again, it's just been produced. Um, but that's not part of your fees. We cover all of that. Then you also have an exhibition, if you want, of your work. How extensive it is depends on what your research is. There is no requirement saying that you must make it look a certain way. If you know the work of Lucien Roberts, you know that she's very exhibition oriented. So therefore, she's phenomenally addicted to making sure it's at a certain level. You also work with a typography fellow, which means there's a recent graduate who also works with you. They are, I wouldn't say your slave, because they're also paid very well, but there's someone who's at a certain level already, they're either a recent graduate student or our undergraduate students, I think, could compete with a lot of graduate students in typography. Um, we haven't opened that up to an international. The typographer in residence, yes. You can be from anywhere to be a typographer in residence. Um, the type fellow right now is still taken from Art Center College of Design. Um, so we do all of the cost of producing and documenting your work. Um, if you want to, you can have some say, but that's not required of you. That's the requirement of the typography fellow and the center. So we feel it's, it's kind of important, I think, to, to understand that there's, there isn't this kind of center in Southern California. And in order for it, we have to kind of persuade you somehow. How do you come to Southern California to see that there are great resources there and that we're, we want to support the type community, whether it's through doing a Vox Pop series in London or doing educational series at the center here, but also if anyone wanted to talk to me about where you are, if you specifically teach or design, talk to me. That's, I'm, I'm here to continue figuring out what is it we can do as a typography center. And this is again more pictures of the space, of her exhibition, and just of the building. We have a, quite a lot. Ah, now this is new. When I mentioned our letterpress program, we're starting an art, I call it an artist in residence because if you're a typographer who's also a letterpress printer, you understand what I mean. It's very different than being a digital letter form designer or a digital typographer. But since the, since the yeah, it's big. Since it's, look, he's going crazy, he's already. Since it's under the, uh, the typography centers, we're all one in the same space. 
It's 4,000 square feet. You would, it's 10 to two weeks. We're just 10 days, sorry, 10 days to two weeks. We're just trying this out right now next year. Um, not quite sure, you will get your own press, of course. You will get your own fellow to work with. And you have access to all of the, the type that we have there to work with. And again, as a residency, you're not being asked to teach, you're being asked to use the facility to work. And I know Rick Griffith, who was just in here, thank you, Rick, he's talking to Rod, I love Rod too. Um, he has uh, printed with me at the center. So has Eric Spiekerman, he has printed with me. We've printed together at Archetype. And if you know Eric, you can send him a little tweet saying, hey, what's the letterpress like at Gloria's Center? And he'll be honest with you, as we all know he will. And if he says anything bad, he has to deal with me. Um, or negative. But this is something very new. Uh, this is just an example, by the way. Sometimes we just use letterpress to sketch. It's not, you're not working in a program that is about becoming a printer. Our letterpress program is a typography program. It is not about making a book. It is about using metal type, wood type, or however you can make that type work on those machines, or your own type, it is about letter form and printing. So that's a real big difference for a lot of other letterpress programs. We understand that this is an integral part of learning typography. And the last thing I'm gonna finish with, this is how you can reach us. Starting October 2018, you can either do social media, we, we will announce it, through our website, we will announce it, or you can email the HMCT. And if you're interested, I don't know, there's a list. If you are interested in the Feminine catalog, if you are interested in the nice, this nice, everything is on demand. Feminine, the first 100, I think there might be some left. Um, we'll just mail it to you. Nice catalog, it's also printed on demand. Nothing is expensive. We try to make everything quite reasonable. And if you want to right now, you can just come up here and take a look and see what the catalogs and programs are about. And every year, we're just gonna keep expanding as much as, I, as much as we can. I mean, it's very important for me to talk, to have a dialogue with type designers, typographers, educators. What can we do as a very specialized typography center that's within our mission, very important within our mission, to help support the community. And I thank Jerry and A-Type I for letting me explain this a little bit more to everyone. So let's go have some drinks. Thank you. Okay. So today